Thanks so much for tuning in to this sermon from Church 110. We know you're about to hear a life-changing sermon that will hopefully inspire you and possibly even challenge you in a few ways. If you would like more info about our church or would like to make a donation, that is great. Please visit our website at church110.com where we would be happy to hear from you. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and follow us on social media. Hey, thanks again for listening and let's dive in. We are all aware of what is going on around us. Uh, And we're praying for for those families that are affected. Um, This is something that um, I stopped and thought and really looked at. I was going to continue um, our series on the value of the one, but I felt like I needed to address the situation. It was happening globally. It is not contained. It has, it has broken loose. And uh, people are afraid. They're panicking. I'm sure many of you know that you went into the stores and the toilet tissue gone. <laughs> you know, just even water gone. And, you know, the food is. And let, and let, let me tell you all something. Just to be very careful. I just, I just want to talk to you this morning, okay? This is just a prelude. Of what's coming. This is just a prelude of what is coming. And there are things coming down uh, the road that the word of God speaks on. And I want to just talk about this coronavirus. And I want you to understand uh, what, how I interpret this um, you know, with the word of God. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to just share it with you. Uh, what I believe that God shared with me. Um, you know, I don't know if some of you know that in September of 2011, there was a movie that came out called Contagion. Yes. 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 And the symptoms that they depicted in the movie is exactly what's going on now. Yes. Yes. See, sometimes we need to pay attention because sometimes these, these movies be prophesying our future, you know. And so we, we I, I, I came across it and I said, oh, my. I said, wow. I said, this is something else. And so, you know, um, it, it, it's so, if, you, if you're not careful, it will freak you out. If you're not careful, you will be paranoid. Even I think I heard um, uh, Bishop Flynn, he was online. He said something which is true. He said 365 times in the Bible, the Lord tells us, don't fear. 365 times he tells us, don't fear. Which means it could be don't fear per day. That's right. Don't fear. God constantly tells us not to fear. Now, I know my time, I've been limited like for 30 minutes, but if I go a little bit over this time, it's all good. So, you know, I want to talk about the controlled pestilence. The controlled pestilence. The word controlled means to keep from exceeding a desirable degree or level. To exercise authority or power over. When someone, has con- when someone is in control, they're, 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 they're exercising authority over this particular thing or situation. Nothing is... is out of control, nothing is in, in the control within itself, per se. There's always something greater. It's always something greater. And so when you look at this situation, um, you think about th- th- this outbreak starting in China in the late uh, 2019, and by March this month, the disease has spread to countries around the world. It is the most fascinating thing to me, but it's, the most, it, but it's the most alarming thing, but it's fascinating, you know, because I sat there and looked at this. I said, this is Bible stuff. 
This is biblical stuff. This is stuff we read about and think about. We're actually dab smack in the middle of it. But his people, this is the time that we are light and salt. Now, I'm not talking about being foolish. No, by all means, do what we're supposed to do. But listen, don't freak out. Don't, don't have a nervous breakdown. Don't go high and scared. Listen, he said, this is the time that we rise up and declare who our God is. Can somebody clap your hands and say hallelujah? What is a virus? What is a virus? A virus... Viruses are made up of genetic material like DNA and are protected by a coating of protein. They hijack, hijack the cells of living organisms. They inject their genetic material right into the cell and take it over. That's what viruses do. They hijack cells and inject their DNA to take over the cell. Another word for virus biblically is pestilence. What is a pestilence? Pestilence is something that's widespread, it's a widespread disease resulting in a high rate of death. Pestilence is not something new. It's been around for a long time. Now, I want to make a statement here. I know many people may disagree with what I'm getting ready to say, but I'm going to give you some Bible to back it up. And the statement is this. Pestilence are sent from the Lord. I'm going to say it again. Pestilence are sent from the Lord. What's happening around globally right now, God sent it. And I know to me evangelicals or some, some people don't understand that or don't, or don't agree with it, especially, you know, charismatic people don't believe. But let me tell you something. It is what it is. It's in the word. And, you know, in fact, the Bible says this. You know, you can just write this part down. Colossians 1.16. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones, dominions, or rulers, or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. That means that which is invisible is working, is working for him. He is in control of it. It's working for his purpose. The pestilence that walk in darkness is working for him. Because the picture is bigger than what we see. Second Samuel 24, 15. It says, so the Lord sent. Uh-oh. For the Lord sent a what? For the Lord sent a pestilence among Israel from the morning until the appointed time. And 70,000 men of the people from Dan to Persheba died. So the Lord sent. What did I just say? For the, now what was going on? David took a census of the people who was against the will of God. He wanted to know how many men he had. You know, God wanted him to trust him, make a long story short. But he sent out a, cen a census, and, the, and that just pleased God. And, and God sent the prophet, you know, and said, now, you got two choices. Because, you know, God didn't like this, David. <laughs> you got two choices. Either you're going to fall in the hands of the Lord or in the hands of men. David said, let me fall in the hands of the Lord. So God sent an angel and caused a pestilence to kill 70,000 Israelites. God sent the pestilence. Exodus 32, 35. Then the Lord sent a plague, another word for pestilence. Then the Lord sent a plague on the people because they made the calf, the one that Aaron made. 
Moses was up in the, on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights getting instructions from God about how to build a tabernacle. Well, during those 40 days, you know, they got impatient, and they said, where is Moses? We, can't, we don't see him nowhere. Aaron, make us a God. We're going back to Egypt. Okay, we all know the story. And God told, uh, told Moses, you know, he said, he didn't say my people. He said your people <laughs> have corrupted themselves. <laughs> you know? So Moses, he went down there and he went down and he was so mad that he took the two stones tablets and broke them, threw them down. You know, and then making make a long story short, that, you know, he, Moses said, who's on the Lord's side? And the tribe of Levi came on his side. And God, and God told, him, told him what to do. And God sent a plague of pestilence among the people. This is just a prelude to come. In Revelations 6, 7, and 8, when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the, of the, of the fourth living creature say, Come! And and I looked and behold a pale horse and his rider's name was Death and Hades followed him. They were given authority over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword and with famine and with pestilence. I won't read Revelation 16. It talks about the seven bowls of judgment. Pestilence. I, wanted to, I want you to see this because I want you to know that the devil just can't do what he want to do. He, he can't. God is the, we have to look at this thing in the right perspective. So God sent this, he sent this thing. And there, and there, out of, out of all the millions of people that, that, that are infected, you don't know the purpose of God that's going to come forth from or in the lives of those people that are infected. You don't know what God is doing. In Luke 21, Jesus said, and he said to them, nation arise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there will be a great earthquake in various places, and famines and pestilence, and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. Again, he talked about what's happening, what's happening now, it's been happen, happening since Jesus left. You know, it, if you look through history, you can see periods of time where pestilence has swept nations. You know, Jesus said this would happen. But he said the end is not yet. This is just the beginning. Now, before I go any further, let's deal with this corona. Why they name it corona? I ain't talking about corona beer either. <laughs> the word corona means a circle or ring of light. In the 17th century, it referred to a circular crown from the Latin word crown of garland. When you think about a crown, a crown is a symbol or a cap of sovereignty worn by a person designated king or queen. The word crown is a mark of victory, a wreath for the head. Crown is a reward of victory or mark of honor. This is a crown. So why they name it coronavirus? The next slide. What does it look like? Next one. That's the virus that's stalking in darkness. <laughs> God has designed our bodies so that when viruses and stuff like that come, he has given us an immune system. Because an immune system, 
uh, compromises uh, many biological structures and possesses within an organism that protects against disease. Without our immune system, we wouldn't be sitting up here. Because the, the, the thing is, if, if viruses can, if, if a virus attack you and latch onto you, that means your immune system is not as strong as it should be. Mm. Your immune system is not as strong as it should be. And so when you think about, when you think about this, this, this crown, when I thought about that, I said, you know, Jesus said this. He said, before he was crucified, when they came to him in the garden, he said, the hour of darkness is your hour right now. There are times that God allows darkness to wear a crown. There are times when God steps back and allows every one of us have an hour of darkness in our life. There are times that God steps back and allows you to walk through the dark times of your life. And it seems like the enemy is going to take you slap out of here. Why? Because God has stepped back and allowed the hour of darkness of your life it, it meant to, to bring you. To re, really, the, it really God is using that to bring you to your rightful place. Because Jesus had to go through that hour to get to the cross, to get to the throne. And so God, as God takes you and gives you an hour of darkness, he, because he's taking you somewhere, which it seems like all hell is breaking loose, but you're on the move. He's taking you. He's fulfilling something in your life that you never thought that God ever had for you. God has allowed this crowd to move all over the earth and God is the one who has the last say so on who is infected and who isn't. Y'all hear what I'm saying? He is the one that's in control. Everything is controlled by him. He knows what he's doing. Is worth. He knows every life that's going to be infected by this virus. He knows every life that's going to end because of this virus. But God has a plan, baby. He has a plan for this, and he knows what he is doing. So maybe right now, it's wearing the crown, but he's going to be dethroned. Because when God says enough is enough, it's enough, it's over. Y'all hear what I just said? When he says enough is enough, it's over, it can't go no further. And the day is coming, the Lord is going to say, stop. They don't know how long it's going to last. They say two weeks. Some say three weeks. Some say a month. Only God knows. It will stop if they find a, a vaccination for it. It's because God gave them the intelligence. And they won't find anything until he says so. We serve a great God. Oh, we serve a great God. We, and, and, and so, I, of course, my heart is grieved by the families that have lost loved ones during this, this time, you know, and I've been praying. Uh, now, trust me, you've been praying for those families that are grieving. You know, they're, they're, they're grieving because they, they lost their loved ones. Certainly, I would be in grief if, you know, my, some of my family members was to leave because of this. Absolutely, I understand that. But as Christians, it comes to a point that we realize that if God allows what one of our loved ones to be attacked by this virus. And if he allows them, it takes them out. This is when our faith has to stand up. Because it's easy to trust God when everything is going fine. But can you trust him when something like this tragically happens? Can you say then, God, you are in control? Can we lift our hands and say thank you? In every situation, give him thanks. It's another whole ball game. But listen, God knows what he's doing. So he's ruling right now. Corona is on the move. She's moving. <laughs> going everywhere she can go. 
getting everybody who she can get, you know. <laughs> getting everybody he can get. <laughs> and, and it's moving all over the world. I'm finishing up. But listen, this is when you go to the Word. And the Bible says in Philippians 2, 8 through 11, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Father, somebody make some noise up in here. Jesus is Lord. He's master over everything. He is the most important person in the universe. And every knee is going to bow. Every time is going to confess that he is Lord. In Ephesians 1, 19 through 21, according to the working of his great might that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named 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 not only in this age but also in the one to come. What is he saying? Everything that has a name, the name of Jesus over that name. And when the right time comes, the, the, oh my God, the mighty name of Jesus will subdue the name Corona. A name means you, you sum up all that a person is. Name in the Bible means much more than in our modern culture. One's whole character was somehow implied in the name. Furthermore, in this context, name implies authority. What am I trying to say? Jesus said, all authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. You could have shot it right there. All authority has been given unto me. The Father has turned it all over to the Son. And all authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. The word named, M-A-M-E-D, means to call by name. Jesus is the name above all names forever. Let any name be uttered, whatever it is, the name of Jesus is above it. It is more exalted than that which the name uttered affirmed. I know, oh my God. There are so many things that have, when we say their names, it causes people to tremble. But there's something about the name of Jesus. And there's nothing that his name cannot subdue or haven't already subdued. He is at the stirring wheel of it all. Why am I saying this? This truth is the steel, S-T-E-E-L. This truth is the steel God offers to put in use as we face calamities. We are to build a vision of God into our lives that will not let us down in the worst of times. I will, need, I will need a way of seeing, we will need a way of seeing the world that involves more than the tenderness of God. In other words, we love God's love and we love his mercy and we love how tender he is. But when death is staring you in the face, when tragedy is broken out all around you, you need, you need to know something more than God's tenderness. That's when you have to understand his authority. That's when you have to understand his sovereignty because he is in control and over everything.
If pestilence breaks out in which it has, tens of thousands are affected. We hear it more and more increasing every day. This is the time that we see a vision of God because your feelings is not going to do it. Your prophesying is not going to do it. Your singing is not going to do it. You have to build a vision of God and you have to see him through it all. And one thing that John said, John said, I, I, behold, I saw one who, 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 whose throne was set or sat in heaven and he who sit on the throne. In other words, he saw a throne and that throne was set. That means that throne ain't moving nowhere. And he's over it all. Everything. I refuse. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. He said, don't be afraid. Pray for people. Have faith in God that he is with you and that, he, that he's keeping you. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's, people are hurting and people are afraid. Saints of God, rise up. Rise up. Rise. Let your light shine. Don't be like the rest of the people afraid and scared to death. No, arise. Understand that God is controlling this. He has authority over it. I want you to know and the more and more I think about this, the more and more I realize, the more and more I realize, as I said earlier, this is just a prelude of what's getting ready to happen. I, what I understand, the president called the day of prayer. Because you know why people, you know what, when, when things get desperate, people know how to pray. They know how to pray. You know, and, and I don't know how to, to what degree this is going to get to, you know, but I mean, for, you know, large churches to not gather together, this is serious. This is serious. But thank God, how many of you love him? So when you, when you, when you, when you go home today, you, by all means, wash your hands, take care of yourself. If you go somewhere other day, you know that if you don't shake hands, if you got to elbow them or bump them or whatever you, but if you don't wash your hands, say, take care of yourself. Yeah. All right, take care of yourself, and but but understand, be at peace. Yeah. Be at peace. He is in control of this thing. It may be a crown right now, but Jesus is Lord. 